Hi, I'm Graham Blackburn, and in this episode of Traditional Woodworking by Hand, I'm going to demonstrate one instance of where you'll be pleased to say, I've been framed. In previous episodes, we've talked about a couple of ways of making the panels that fit into frame and paneling. We talked about parchment fold. We did a little introduction about linen fold. And today I'm going to show you something a little more traditional, how to make a raised panel. Now, here is an example of some framing. It could be the preparatory framing for a door or a cupboard or whatever. And First of all, I want you to notice something that I find always very useful is that I've marked all the parts. Even though this is not glued or fixed together, I've used the triangle method. So marking a triangle on all the parts shows you which is the face side, which is the top piece, which is the middle piece, which is the bottom piece. This is the left hand side. This is the right hand side. This has nothing to do with making the panel, but it's really good practice. Similarly, this piece, which is going to be the raised panel that I'm going to fit in the top here, I've also looked at and decided, okay, I want this to be the face side and this to be the top. So how do we go about making this piece of wood fit into this frame? Well, the first thing we do is to use a marking gauge set to the width of the groove that the panel has to fit into. In this case, it's a quarter of an inch. So I've set the, there's actually a pencil gauge, which you can make yourself, just so you can see a little more clearly. And working from the back side, and here's the triangle, so I know this is the face, working from the back side, I'm going to, mark the line that indicates how thick the edge has to be if it's going to fit in. Okay. Now, all I need to do in order to make a little raised panel like this, <clears throat> the traditional way, is to use a pretty simple and not hard to find fielding plane. It's called a fielding plane or panel raising plane because when you make a panel like this that's thin at the edges that fits into the groove but the center is proud this is known as the field so this is what this plane does we start off by putting the wood in the vise and we put it in face side up and we'll start with the ends because if this plane is tears anything out at the end here, the tear out will get removed when I do the side. So as with a lot of other molding planes that I've mentioned before, if you look really carefully, you can see that both the fence and here is a line indicating the angle at which the plane should be held. We've talked about that before. This is called the spring line. So I place the plane on the wood with the spring line as vertical as I can get it, and I just start to plane. And all I'm watching for is that I plane down to the line that I just marked with the pencil gauge. Just to show you, let's take a little look at that. You can see I'm halfway down to the line. So I have to keep planing until I'm down to this line. And that way, what's left will fit into the frame.
So let's check. And indeed, we're very, very close to the line. So this tape means that I have to take just a few more strokes until that line disappears. And that looks perfect. Now, the process is to do the other end. And that's about right. Having planed both of the ends down to the line that I marked, so that we have, in effect, a tongue that will fit into the groove of the framing, I now turn the wood sideways, put it between the dogs here, tighten it up, now all I have to do is the same thing at the sides. This time, I not only have the line that I drew to look at, but I can also see, as you'll see when I plane, that I can see when I plane down that this should be level all the way around. So let's get started. If you look closely, you'll see that I'm very close to this level here, but I need a little more on this side. So that determines exactly how I hold the plane. I want to take more of this end than the other, but eventually this rabbit that I'm making all the way around will be perfectly level. And that's about it. And see that the tongue now is the same level all the way around. All that remains is to fit to the last side. So having fielded our panel and having made the rabbit all the way down to the line equally around. It's time to see if it will fit in the frame. Paying attention that the face side as indicated by the triangle is going on the face side 
of the frame, which also has lots of triangles. We'll turn this up on its side and we'll see if it fits in. And it does nicely. So now we put the top piece on. Always a little tricky to do this. Don't we can see how we're going from here. And here we have the first fielded panel for our potential door. Now this was just the simplest way of fielding a panel so that it will fit into the grooves. But if I had taken a little longer time or used a slightly different plane, I could actually have made the field raised by making a little rabbit all the way around the top there. But either way, this is the basic procedure for fitting a panel into what might very well be a nice panel door. So I hope you like that. If you want to see more complicated versions, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and uh, come back and we'll show you more about how wonderful it is to use traditional woodworking hand tools. Thank you.